Hi everyone, it's Terry. I was recently asked if I could show you how to make a quilt label and I'm happy to do so. One of the things that I want to mention to you is quilt labels pre preserve the history of a quilt. And it's very important today because quilts are stolen to have a label attached to the quilt. And if it is sewn securely into the binding and stitched into the back of the quilt, and even if it, it is quilted, when the quilt is quilted, it prevents someone from taking something that took hours to complete from stealing it and trying to act as if they own it. So let me tell you a little bit about quilt labels. One of the things that I recommend with a quilt label is you want to make sure you identify the purpose of the quilt. Like I've made quilts for my husband. My first one was made 10 years ago and it was a queen size quilt for his 50th birthday. And in that quilt, what I did is I named the name of the quilt pattern. It was an El Eleanor Burns pattern. It was victory quilts. I have a little stitch design that is firework motif. And then in addition to that, I mentioned that the purpose of the quilt, it was for to celebrate his 50th birthday. I had his name, my name, I pieced the quilt, so I showed that I pieced the quilt, and it was custom quilted by a local long arm artist, so her name's on it as well. It's always important to, to have the label indicate what the quilt is for, and that the date for the quilt. I think those are the two most important pieces, but if you send your quilts out to someone who does long arm quilting for you, I think it's nice to mention who quilted it for you as well. It preserves history. So most of my quilt labels are going to be rectangular. You can see this one here. Let me go ahead and just save it. So I'll choose file, save as. I usually use save as and I'll call it a quilt template three by five because that's the size of it and it's template two so that's what I'll use. Now I also make my labels four by six and some of my labels are actually sewn into piece backing which is actually more secure some are hand stitched after the quilt is made, particularly one that is custom quilted. Some might have a motif on the outside. And in some instances, if you want, you can embroider directly on your backing. But you have to make sure that your backing is very, very straight whenever you, you quilt everything together. So keep that in mind. You can use different shapes. Let's choose File New. It just depends on you. And what we'll do is I typically use a, a rectangle, but you could use a heart. You could use any other shapes. But remember, you're trying to get words on this, so you want it to be large enough. And you also have to decide how you're going to stitch it on your quilt backing. If you're sewing it by hand, you may not want to use one of these shapes that is a regular. We're going to just use the shape that I typically use, which is a rectangle. So all I do is just drag the rectangle. I'm using a, a five by seven hoop. And you can see it's already applied a motif stitch. I can go in, first of all, I want to make sure I size this by going to home and size and I'll maintain the aspect ratio and I do want it to be, I said five by seven hoop, but I want this to be three by five or four by six. Let's make it four by six. So we need to enter the numbers the opposite direction because we rotated the hoop. And now what I'm going to do is I'll center it by going to arrange, move to center and go back to shapes. And now I can decide, am I going to sew this in by hand? And maybe I just want to use a running stitch or a triple stitch. Let's use a running stitch on it. And we can change the length of that running stitch if we want for stitching it on the backing, or we can leave it this size. Now you also have to decide, decide how you're going to finish the edge of that. 
And one of the things that I oftentimes do is I'll cut out the piece of fabric slightly larger. I'll use some kind of fusible interfacing, stitch around the edges, turn it, and fuse it into place, and then I can stitch over it and embroider it. There are many ways you can do this. You can also use your line as a line for cut line so that you have something to cut it out, and then what you can do is you can fold the edges. There are a lot of ways to do this. So what we'll do is we'll leave the running stitch on here, and now what we're going to do is add some lettering. Now you can also add a design. Let's just say that we went to import, and this particular label is made for one of your quilt friends, and you want it to have a, a little motif. So let's just add this little quilt design in the up, upper corner. And now what we'll do is we're going to find a font. Now, one of the things that I like to do is I like to use light fonts. This is a personal preference. You can choose whatever you want. So let's just say that this is this quilt's name, and I'm just I'm making up a name, and I'll, I'll call it Flowers in the Garden. So that's the name of the, of the quilt design. And what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and press enter. Now we can move this and we can resize it. Let's first move it and, and see how large it is before we resize it. And to move it, you need to have the crosshairs. And you notice that it's really too large to put up at the top. So we'll put it down below. And let's say that it is um, flowers in the garden. And what we'll do is we'll continue adding by clicking over here in the text box. And I'll press Control Enter. So it's flowers in the garden. And it was made in May 2019. And it was presented to, let's go ahead, presented to Joe. Jones, and I'm making up all of this, and I'll press the control enter key, and uh, made by Anna, and I need to remove the caps, Anna Jones. Okay, so this is what you could do, and you could have a label that is a very simplistic label that you can attach. If you wanted to go back and change the outline or anything, you can select it in the sewing order. Go up here because it is a shape, and right now it's a running stitch. If you wanted to add a motif stitch to it, you could. So let's go look at the sewing attributes. We'll go to the motif stitches, and because this is a flower theme, maybe we want to add a flower. Let's add this one and choose OK. So now you have an idea how you can quickly make a quilt label. You understand the importance of quilt labels. And it's up to you as a designer to make a label that you like and to also adhere it to the back of the, the quilt the way you like to adhere it. I hope this information is helpful to you. Thanks so much for your time today, as always. I'm Terry Maffitt. Please join me on Facebook in the Just Stitching with the Brother Luminaire group.